Good morning students and welcome back to our biosology class. In today's class and we are going to discuss about the lot of interesting character regarding the kingdom Animalia. Anyhow before we look into this today's portions just we can do one review regarding this last day's class. Fine. Okay. So the last class we have discussed regarding basis of classification. As per this basis of classification we have learned how the organism has been classified based on certain characters right so as per that we have learned about the certain character that such as level of organization in the sense means it is cellular level of organization tissue level of organization organ level of organization as well as organ system level of organization okay then and embryonic layer as per the embryonic layer they have classified as two that is diploplastic as well as the triploplastic organisms and diploplastic organisms, they said it consists of only two layer ectoderm as well as the endoderm. And triploplastic organisms consist of three layers that is ectoderm, mesoderm as well as endoderm. Right. And the third one is patterns of symmetry. So, we said two basic symmetry that is radial symmetry as well as bilateral symmetry. Fine. And the third one is coelom. So, coelom is a cavity. So, we know there is three kinds of coelom we said. Azelamate, pseudocelamate as well as eucelamate. Eucelamate is again classified as chizocelamate as well as enterocelamate, right? And segmentation. So the repeated segment is called metamedicine. Then again, notochord we say notochord as per the presence of notochord, we can classify the organisms as a vertebrate as well as invertebrates or chordates or non chordates Fine. Okay. So, last class we have discussed as per which basis they are going to classify these organisms, right? And now, this class we are going to discuss about this kingdom Animalia, okay? And today's class we are going to discuss this classification of kingdom Animalia. So, five kingdom we know as per the five kingdom concept, kingdom Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia, right? And this chapter we are clearly going to discuss regarding this kingdom Animalia. Okay, so we hope the last class I said to learn this 10 phylum names belongs to the kingdom Animalia. Hope you may have learned. And so the phylum are Porifera, Nedaria, Tinophora, Platyhelminthus, Ascalminthus, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemicardata, as well as Cordata. Right? This is the 10 phylum. Among this, today we are going to discuss regarding this first 7 phylum alone. Right, which belongs to non chordates. What do you mean non chordates? There is no notochord for these organisms that is called it is non chordate, or we can say it is invertebrates. Is it clear? So, let us look into one by one, right? Okay. So, the first one we said, of course, it is kingdom animalia classification of kingdom animalia, right? So, we know kingdom animalia consists of all the multicellular organisms. So, all the multicellular organisms belongs to kingdom Animalia, right? So, which means it is considered one vast group, right? That's why this kingdom Animalia, again, they are classifying as two sub-kingdoms. Are you following me? Two sub-kingdoms. So, what are the two? Parasova as well as Eumetasova, right? So, Parasova means it is a cellular level of organization, right? And the rest of this organizations for example tissue level of organization organ system level of organization and organ level of organization everything belongs to eumetasova right so this classification is made based on organization is it clear so there is two parasova as well as eumetasova right okay then as per this as per this 10 phylum the first phylum porifera belongs to parasova and the rest in area to chordata belongs to eumetasova. Is it clear? Okay. So, again this 9 phylums is getting vast group. That's why they are classifying this 9 phylums eumetasova again as 2 grades. Understand? Again as 2 grades. What are the 2 grades? Radiata as well as bilateria. This classification is made as per the symmetry. Is it clear? Okay. Radiata as well as bilateria. Okay. So, this symmetry already we know, right? So, now radiator consists of this phylums, Nidaria as well as Tenophora. Nidaria as well as Tenophora belongs to radiator, right? And the rest, Platyhelminthus to Chordata belongs to Bilateria. Is it clear? 
okay then again also it is platyhelminthes helminthes to chordate one was to group only right so again this group is classified as divisions two divisions so the bilateria is classified as two division again what are the two divisions protostomia as well as deuterostomia right protostomia as well as deuterostomia so protostomia means the coelums a coelum pseudo coelum as well as cysocoelum cysocoelum already we know so u coelum it is classified as two one is cysocoelumate as well as enterocoelumate that we have discussed in the last class even do you remember okay so protostomia includes a coelumate pseudo coelumate as well as cysocoelumate then deuterostomia include enterocoelumates okay then a coelumate means which phylum platyhelminthes pseudo coelumate means which phylum ascalminthes cysocoelumate includes annelida as well as arthropoda right then uh, enterocoelumate includes phylum echinodermata and chemicordata as well as chordata okay so this is the classification for kingdom animalia is it clear shall we go to the next okay so we are going to discuss about the first phylum it is porifera okay first we are going to discuss regarding some general characters few general character we are going to discuss and and we are going to discuss about very specific character it is exactly for this phylum such a character also we are going to discuss fine as per that the first one is the habitats of course we have to know where it is living right so of course it is living in the aquatic region most of this porifera species is living in the marine and a very few it is living in the fresh water also okay and could you tell me the organization yeah of course cellular level of organization okay next one symmetry it's asymmetrical then nutrition here one of the another one character they said nutrition nutrition they said it is a hollow hollow soic nutrition hollow soic nutrition means is a complete nutrition for example we can say various steps will be there ingestion taking the food digestion absorption assimilation digestion this is the process one by one process is going on right so that type of this nutrition we could say it is a hollow soic nutrition from ingestion to digestion step by step this digestion process is going on that we could say it is a new hollow soic nutrition understand and intracellular means this uh, in digestion process or uh, assimilation process is going on inside the cells that is called it's a intracellular nutrition okay and the six six variety this is a hermaphrodites hermaphrodite in the sense both male gamete as well as a female gamete excel as well as the sperm cells both is produced from the same organism is called is a hermaphrodites is it clear hermaphrodites means the single organism is producing both uh, gametes for example excel as well as sperm cell that type is called it is hermaphroditic type right okay and the second next character it is a reproduction reproduction is going on by both the mother sexual mother as well as asexual mother so sexual mothers means we know already and the gamete will be produced excel and the sperm cells will be produced for sexual mother and it will fuse together then the zygote may form right then asexual mother means from the body pores the next organism will be produced that is called it is asexual reproduction so in phylum porifera both this type of reproduction is going on understand okay next one is development development this is a indirect developments so what do you mean indirect and direct development indirect development means of course after fertilization it will produce a zygote zygote will become embryo but embryo pass through the next stages it's a larval stage larva become become as a adult so that direction is called as indirect development understand so egg to it will pass through the larval stage is called as indirect development direct development in the sense there is no larval stage will be there is it clear so here this development is indirect okay of course we said indirect development means surely there will be the larval stage so the larva of phylum porifera is parenchymula and as well as this amphiblastula these are all this larva of this phylum porifera understand so these are the some general characters we have discussed now and some very specific character also there for this phylum porifera shall we look into that okay 
Among this, the first one is circulation. Here, one specific circulation is going on in this phylum porifera that is called water transport or canal system. Water transport or canal system. Of course, you can understand water is transporting into the body. That's why they named it as a water transport system. Canal system means through one canal, one path the water is moving. So, this is a canal system. Okay. So, already in the previous class, I hope you, I said about the structure of this porifera, the wall of this porifera. The outer layer consists of the spinacocytes as well as the inner layer consists of the conocytes. It is a flagellated cell. Do you remember? Okay. So, can you look into the figure? So, here also the same figure I have displayed here. And the outermost structure is called it's a pinacoderma. It consists of the pinacocytes. And the innermost layer, the yellowish cells, it is called it's a conocytes or flagellate cells. Okay. And can you see this ostia? Ostia is a hole which is found in the outer surface of this wall. It is connecting to the inner surface, inner, inner cavity that is called the blue color. It is mentioned it is spongocele. So, this ostia is collect, connecting the outer surface or outer environment to inner environment. Is it clear? So, through this ostia, the water is moving inside. So, the water will take this oxygen and the water will take the nutrient. Everything may go towards this ostia and it will enter into this spongocele. It is a central cavity. Okay. Then the cells will collect this nutrients as well as this oxygen and the rest of this water will be eliminated along with this base through this open, common open that is called it is osculum which is at the top. Have you noticed the outgoing water through osculum is mentioned at the top. So, this is called it is a circulation for this porifera. So, what are this uses is there behind this one? First one is food gathering. Of course, through this water current only, it is collecting the food also. The, it is bringing the food also along with this water current. So, it is getting the food. Okay. Second one, it is useful for respiration. It, which, which water consists of the oxygen also. That's why. Then circulation. Everything is moving through this water. Then removal of waste also. So, these are all the processes going on by this system. It is called it is a canal system. Do you get me? Okay. And the next one is the reproduction. So, already we said reproduction is going on by two methods. One is sexual method, another one is asexual method. So, asexual method as we said already, the body parts may become as one new organism. That is called it is asexual reproduction. Understand? So, here I displayed the figure. There this one parent uh, organism is there. Right? From the parent, one bud is arising from the parent. And finally, the bud will grow. When the bud mature, the bud will detach from the parent body. Then it will fall down. Then one new sponge will produce. Understand? So, that is called asexual reproduction. So, from the parent body, the part of this parent body is becoming as one new organism. That is called it is asexual reproduction method. Okay. Then what do you mean sexual method? Sexual methods means we can say already we said gametes will be produced, egg cell as well as the sperm cells will be produced. So, egg cell and the sperm cell is produced from the same organism that is we said it is a hermaphrodite and it will fuse together. So, that is what the cycle I have mentioned there. So, first it is producing the egg cell and the sperm cells also will be produced and the collar cells, the collar cells will receive the sperm and egg also will be fusing in the next part. It is a fertilization and then after fertilization it is becoming as embryo then embryo is becoming as a larva. So, here the larva name is it is ampiblastula. Can you notice? Okay. Then this ampiblastula is becoming uh, growing. Then it will settle at the bottom. Then from the bottom it will become as one new sponge. Understand? So, this cycle we can say it is sexual reproduction. Is it clear? Okay. Shall we go to the next? The next one is its skeletal system. The skeletal system, they said it consists of one. The outer surface of this uh, sponges consist of this glass-like spicules. Can you notice the yellow color? So, glass-like spicules are present in the outer surface of the sponges. It is giving one support to this uh, sponges or, or to the body wall. That is why it, it is performing as a skeletal system. Okay. Then few examples they said for this phylum porifera that is psychon, hyalonema, calina as well as euplectella. These are the few examples we could say for this phylum porifera. Okay. 
So phylum porifera few general character we said as well as few specific character also we said. Okay. Shall we look into the second phylum? Fine. Okay. So the next phylum is phylum nedaria or cilantrata. It's this old term for this phylum nedaria, right? And the new term is nedaria. So just we can see this general character of this nedaria. So the habitat is aquatic and the life style it is sessile or free. So sessile in the sense the organism may fit into one particular place and be there. It is immobile. Free in the sense of course it will be very free. It will be free movement will be there, right? Then solitary or colonial. Solitary in the sense it used to be alone. The organism will be alone. It won't be as a group that is called solitary. But colonial means this organism will be as a group that is called colonial form, right? Then organization is tissue level of organization. Symmetry is radial symmetrical and the germinal layer is diploplastic type and the reproduction is sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction. Both is there and the development is indirect development. Of course, indirect development may consider the larva and the larva of the cylindrate is planula, right? And now we can see this next special features. Is it clear? So, the first very specific character is nidocytes or nidoblast. So, it is one of the very peculiar character for this phylum. So, nidocytes or nidoblast is one of the cells which is found in this tentacle of these organisms. So, this here I displayed one figure. So, there is a hydra, it consists of tentacle and the tentacle consists of the specialized cells that is called nidocytes. So, these nidocytes consist of the coiled thread that is called nematocyst along with the trigger okay and when it is getting the prey this coiled thread will uncoil and it will capture the prey so that is one of the use with this cells and another one since it consists of the trigger some cases they said it consists of the poisonous substance also so it can penetrate inside the enemy that could it would be able to defense this itself also so that also another one use they said it could it escape from the enemies also understand next one is uh, anchoring also anchoring in the sense this could this coiled tube will be uh, catch in somewhere and it could anchor its body in somewhere else that is called it is called anchoring purpose also understand the next one they said is a circulation so circulation means they said at this one of this example we said hydra and the hydra, the central region of the hydra consists of the cavity, that, that cavity is filled with the water. So, the water current is moving inside, the water is moving inside. So, the water is moving through the cylantron, that is a general cavity which is present inside and the water will comes out through the mouth. So, that also mentioned there at the top, it is a mouth and this mouth or it is otherwise known as it is a hypostome, right. So, the water is moving through the cylindron and it is coming out through the mouth or hypostome. So, this water is taking this necessary things, even oxygen and this nutrients, everything is taken by this water current, okay, that is called circulation. And this method is used for digestion also. Digestion means after this digestion, the waste also will be eliminated through this circulatory method. Is it clear? Nervous system. So, nervous system means they say and the nerve consists, the nervous system will be as a form of net, nerve net. So, here I displayed the figure, the body fully this nervous system, nerve is there as like a net. So, that is why they said it is this and nervous system is present as a nerve net. Understand? And this is also one of the very specific character for this nadarians. So, the body will be in a two form. The body will be in two form. That is, one is this cylindrical form, another one is umbrella form. So, the cylindrical form of this animal is called as it is a polyp. And in one another stage, it will become as this umbrella shape. That shape is called it is as medusa. So, the organism is getting two form. One is polyp form, another one is medusa form. Polyp form means we can say cylindrical in shape and medusa form means we can say it is umbrella shape. Understand? Okay. Then reproduction. So, reproduction is going on by two methods we said. Asexual reproduction as well as the sexual reproduction. So, if this is one of the asexual reproduction I displayed there. In hydra, the asexual reproduction is going on by budding method. So, the body parts, 
one buds may form first one then it will mature and it will develop finally it will detach from the body then then this will fall down on the surface then it will become as one new hydra that is called it is asexual reproduction okay and sexual reproduction sexual reproduction means already we said it is sexual reproduction need gametes right gametes so of course it need this male gamete as well as the female gamete egg cell and the sperm cells okay so here listen the first they said the first figure it is explained as polyform of this hydra right polyform so this polyform is producing medusaform by asexual method what do you mean asexual method the part of this body may detach from the air and from that one new organism will produce that is called it is medus that is called it is asexual reproduction understand so listen me first they said one parent organism is there from the parent body one new bud may produce or, or part of this body may detach then it will become as one new organism okay so here even they say hydros budding method also there is strobilization method also there budding method only previously we explained right one buds may form on the body strobilization method means they say the part of this body may detach from the body and that part may become as one new organism that is called strobilization method okay so now here parent hydra is there and the parent hydra is now in polyp form then by asexual reproduction method this polyp form is producing medusa is it clear then this medusa is producing egg cell as well as the sperm cell so this egg cell and the sperm cell is fusing together during fertilization then it is producing the zygote and the zygote is producing the blastula blastula is becoming as a larva it is called planula and the planula is becoming as a again polyp do you get me so listen me polyp is producing medusa by asexual method and meanwhile medusa is producing this polyp by sexual method am i right so this process is called metagenesis so polyform as well as the medusa form is going on alternatively am i right is it clear that is called metagenesis fine and again they said few examples for this nidaria for example hydrosova jelly jellyfish coral and giant green anemone these are all the few examples for phylum need area is it clear shall we go to the next phylum the next phylum is tenophora tenophora and this is one common name also they said it is called home jellies fine okay so let us see some general character about this tenophora so this tenophora they said habitat is exclusively marine it lives only in marine water that is called as exclusively marine then organization is tissue level of organization and symmetry they said it's a radial symmetry and the germ layer it is a diploplastic type and sexes are monoecious sexes are monoecious means and male and female are the same organism that is called it is monoecious which means this gamete will be produced from the same organisms right okay then reproduction in the sense sexual reproduction okay then development is indirect what do you mean indirect it may pass through this larval stage so the larva name is cydip larva is it clear okay now we can look into this very specific character of this phylum tenophora fine among this the first one is it is a locomotion locomotion means they said this this animal consists of eight lateral rows of ciliated home plates eight lateral rows of ciliated home plates can you see this eight rows of the ciliated plates this ciliated plate is useful for the locomotion right so that is useful for the locomotion of this organism so that's why they, it is named this organism is named by this home jellies or it is commonly they call it as sea walnuts okay then another one character okay and the next one is lasso cells or coloblast so lasso cells in the sense in the last phylum we said regarding the nidocytes right which is useful for anchoring and capturing the prey etc right 
the same here and this organism consists of the specialized cell called it is lasso cells or it is called as chloroplast and this is useful for this uh, for food gathering the food for example the, at last it is mentioned chloroplast or lasso cells that secrete sticky fiber on contact with the prey so with the sticky substance it could capture the spray also right okay and the next very important character of this organism is bioluminescence so bioluminescence means already we said it is one of the ability of the living organism to emit light so it is one of the very peculiar character for this tenophora fibre okay so these are all the characters we have said regarding this phylum tenophora and now we are looking into this phylum platyhelminthes fine okay so phylum platyhelminthes few spe special characters first we have we can discuss then we can move into this special characters fine okay so phylum platyhelminthes habitat they say this endoparasites so endoparasite means it is living inside this organisms including human we can say right and organization is organ system level of organization and symmetry it is bilateral symmetry and the germ layer it is triploplastic which means it consists of three germ layers ectoderm endoderm as well as mesoderm right and the coelom is a coelom there is no coelom and movement is unidirectional it is moving in only one directional and the nutrition is it is you know, absorbing the food from the host wherever it is right and sex is monoecious so monoecious means and uh, both the gametes are produced from the same organisms that is called monoecious type and the reproduction is sexual reproduction which means the gamete will be produced uh, sex cells for example sperm cells and egg cells will be produced okay and the development is indirect indirect means we can say of course it is passing through the larval stage is it clear shall we see the special characters fine of course it is one of the very important character for this phylum platyhelminthes and platyhelminthes helminthes is otherwise known as it is flat worms because it is dorsolo ventrally flat dorsal side and the ventral side is very flat that's why this it is a flat worms so it is one of the example we can say tape worm it's a example for flat worm so this is a figure i explained here is a tape worm uh, head of this tape worm that is called squalax right and here they said these are the organisms especially say endoparasite so it has to attach in one side so that's why they said it consists of this and suckers as well as a hooks so the top of this head consists of the hook and the side consists of sucker so these are all this uh, organs which is helping for this attachment that is called as uh, one of the special character for this organisms right and the next excretion so excretion means elimination of this waste substances right so that is called as excretion and here one of the very special cell is there for this phylum platyhelminthes is called flame cells this flame cell is helping for this excretion right it is one of this very special cell only found in this platyhelminthes alone okay so here i have displayed the figure it is a planaria and here uh, at the border consists of the excretory canal from that only one canal alone they expanded again and that canal consists of the cells that is called as a flame cells so this flame cell is useful for this excretion process okay and development as we said development is indirect development so here this is passing through this various larval stages okay and development is internal indirect means as we said it must to pass through the various larval stages but here it is passing through many larval stages and it is little complicated also they said it is a developmental process also and let us look into this figure and listen so first they said is liver fluke is here and liver fluke is producing the egg and the egg will be converted as the next larval stage it is called miracidium and miracidium is converted into the next larval stage it is called sporocyst sporocyst is developing as a seraria radia is developing as a seraria and cercaria i'm sorry and the next one cercaria is becoming as this metacercaria then metacercaria will be converted as one adult organisms right so 
This is the larval stages it is passing through phylum platyhel members. Clear? Then regeneration. It is one of the very very special character for this phylum platyhel members and especially it is found in this planaria. Right? And planaria and planaria is the very specific character is there and if we cut this body in this pieces, each pieces may become as one uh, individual organism that is called it is very specific regeneration capacity is there in this planaria organism. So, it is belongs to this phylum platyhel members. So, body of planaria cut into pieces and each cut may become as one new organism. Okay, fine. A few examples we could say for this phylum platyhel members that is planaria, labor fruit as well as tape one. Is it clear? So, first we learned about this few general characters then very specific character for this phylum platyhel members. Okay. Shall we go to the next phylum? And the next phylum is phylum ascalminders. So, ascalminders general characters and its habitat it is free as we said already. The free means it is a free zooming one. It is not depending on another one and it is not a sessile one. It do not fit into one place. That is, uh, It is free movement, right? And parasitic form Parasitics means it will depend the host for its nutrition everything and it is to live in aquatic as well as terrestrial so in every form it is there right phylum ascalminders then organization is organ system level of organization then symmetry is bilateral symmetry germ layer is triple plastic and coelom it is pseudo coelom coelom is there but it is not a real coelom that is why it is known as it is pseudo coelom and segment is unsegmented body the body there is no segment is there and some cases they said invisible segment will be there inside the body and the whole body is covered by this layer called it is cuticle. The body is not segmented, the body is covered by the layer called it is cuticle. And here the sex is dioecious, which means male and female is separate, right? Okay. And the development is direct development also there, indirect also there, right? And the fertilization is internal fertilization. Is it clear? Shall we see the specific characters? Okay. Of course, of course, we said this sex is a dioecious one. So, male and female is separate. So, here it is a, one of the examples is Ascaris, and here the male is male is smaller than the female. So, female is lengthiest one, right? Okay. And the next one is digestion. Digestion here this it is getting the complete digestive system, which means as this uh, in this last class also complete digestion and incomplete digestion do you remember complete digestion means the digestive system may commences from mouth and it will end in the anus so between these two digestive uh, digestive organs will be there so the whole organ may do the function same function digestion function that is called it is complete digestive system right so here also i explain the figure and the digestive system is starting from the mouth and of course it may end as and pharynx and so on intestine is there Finally, it will end with the anus. So, this type of digestion is called it is complete digestive system, right? Then excretion. Excretion, they said here it consists of one special cells or special gland is there for this excretion that is called rennet glands. It is marked at the last rennet gland. So, this rennet gland is useful for this excretion. So, phylum platyhel means this we said this is flame cells. Is it clear? And phylum Ascalminders excretion is done with the help of this rennet glands. Clear? And here also we could say few examples that is uh, for an ancelostoma and ucheraria, ascaris, rabbitis. These are all these few examples for phylum ascalminders. Right? Let us move to the next phylum, it is phylum annelida. So, phylum annelida also is one of the very familiar variety. We can say it is a earthworm. It is a segmented worm. The body is segmented one. And let us look into some general characters. So, habitat it is free living as well as it is one of the parasitic one. And it is living in the aquatic also and it is living in the terrestrial also. Right? These are all the habitats. Okay. Organization it is an organ system. Symmetry of course it is bilateral symmetry. And germ layer triple plastic germ layer. And coelom is chisocelomate. Do you remember chisocelomate? Coelom is formed from the mesodermal layer. It is called it is chisocelomate. Right. And segmentation, it is a segmented body we say. 
So segmentation means metamerism. The last class we said what is metamerism. Do you remember? The same type of this segment is repeated throughout the body. So that is called this metamerism. So here the segment is metamerism type. Right? Okay. Six is monoecious as well as dioecious. Monoecious means both male and female gamete will be produced from the same organism is called monoecious. Dioecious means male gamete is produced from the male organism and the female is produced from the female organisms. Is it clear? Okay. And respiratory pigment. Respiratory pigment in the sense, you know, we have the res uh, respiratory pigment is a hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is present in the blood and this is transporting the oxygen. So, we used to call it as a respiratory pigment. So, here, phylum Manelida consists of two types of this respiratory pigment. What is hemoglobin as well as chlorochlorine. Right? There is a respiratory pigment for this phylum Manelida. It will be asked as a two mark question. Right? And development, they said, this is direct development also there, indirect development also there. Hope you know, right? And the larva of this indirect development is called, this a trochophore larva for phylum Annelida. Is it clear? Shall we look into the special characters? So, the special character, they said, this is a nervous system as well as a circulatory system I displayed here. So, the nervous system and the circulatory system, they said, first of all, we can go to the nervous system. And the nervous system is, yes, double ventral nerve cord so it is noticed as a yellow color uh, that nerve cord there the yellow color nerve cord is a double ventral nerve cord it is arising from this uh, head region i mean it is a brain region here it is known as a ganglion so we can see as a brain or it is known as a ganglion so double ventral nerve cord why this is a ventral nerve cord because it is running through the ventral cell uppermost region is dorsal and the lower most region is called ventral so, this double ventral nerve cord is running from this ganglion. So, this is moving throughout this body. This will perform as a nervous system, right? And circulatory system. Circulatory system consists of, it is a closed type. So, circulatory system, what do you mean closed type? Blood is moving inside the blood vessels. So, here we could say it is, it consists of the heart, lateral hearts. And it consists of this dorsal vessel, ventral vessel is there. So, the blood is moving inside this dorsal vessel and the ventral vessel. So, we can say it is this closed type of circulatory system. Right? Okay. So, the next one is a hydrostatic skeleton which means it is one of the very peculiar character for this annelids and here they said the annelids consist of two types of the muscles that is one is the longitudinal muscle and another one is the ring muscles. So, inside this ring muscles it is filled with the fluid. So, that is called as a coelomic fluid. So, it consists of the coelom and the coelom is filled with the fluid substance. That is why they said it is a coelomic fluid. So, these ring muscles as well as this coelomic fluid is together it performs as like one skeleton that is called as a hydrostatic skeleton. So, it is present inside the body since this fluid or water support is there inside the body they said it is a hydrostatic skeleton. Fine. And locomotion. So, hydrostatic skeleton also we said it is helping for the locomotion and some special locomotory organ also there for the certain organisms. For example, knee is we can see it consists of one hard plate around this body that is called parapodia. This parapodia is helping for this locomotion. And earthworm of course we may learn in the lower classes. The surface of this body consists of minute finger like uh, hair like projection that is called it is CT. So, the CT is helpful for locomotion. And leech is also another example for this phylum and this is, this consists of the sucker at this head region that is called this uh, sucker which is helping for this attachment. So, these are all as well as for locomotion. So, these are all the locomotory organ for phylum Annelida. Understand? Shall we go to the next phylum? So, the next phylum is Arthropoda. So, Arthropoda is the one of the largest phylum they say. And let's just we can look in the general characters and the habitat is terrestrial, organization is organ system level of organization, symmetry is bilateral symmetry, germ layer is triploplastic type and zelum is tyxoselamate, segment is the body is segmented body but it is not metameric type okay but the segment is in various size right and sexes are diocese, reproduction is sexual reproduction. And the development is direct as well as indirect development is there. Fine. And the body divisions they said body is divided as three divisions. 
uh, the first region is called hydrogen the chest region is called is a thoracic region and the lower end is called it is abdominal region right and locomotion and feeding and sense these are all happening with the help of this joint appendages so this is the appendages of the it is connected each other that is called it is a joint appendages so this is helping for locomotion as well as this is using for feeding also and maybe it is functioning as one of the sense organ also so the joint appendage is performing as a locomotory organ and it is using for feeding and it is perform as a sense organ also fine the next one molting or egg digestion molting or egg digestion means so this kind of this organisms the outer surface of this organism consists of this uh, chitinous exoskeleton chitinous exoskeleton and this will this is actually useful for protection of this body and this will be uh, removed removed periodically or shed off periodically it is during this growth that this process is called molting or egg digestion understand and the respiratory organs is consist of various respiratory organ they said as per this organisms the respiratory organ also may vary for example we can say it's a book lungs book lungs is one of the respiratory organ internal gills is one of the respiratory organ and trachea it is also one of the respiratory organ for this phylum arthropoda right and circulation is it's a open type of circulation already we said open type circulation in the sense and there is no blood vessels to carry this blood so this and chamber is there and chambers of heart is there and the blood is moving inside but there is no blood vessel and to carry away this blood to throughout the body so that's why this circulated type they said this is open type of circulatory system and the sense organs sense organs one of the sense organ is eye and another one sense organ we can say is antenna so the antenna and the eye is behaving as is sense organs right and the excretion excretion also with the help of this few uh, cells they said especially malbigen tubule so first we get it is displays a malbigen tubule so this malbigen tubule is useful for excretion and another one they said is a green glands so here the green color it is mentioned there this green glands this green gland also helping for this excretion right then if this is one of the another one very important process for this phylum uh, arthropoda it's a metamorphosis metamorphosis means this life cycle starts from egg and it pass to this larval stage then it converted into pupa stage and finally it become as a adult stage so this cycle of this cycle of this life or life cycle is called as it is metamorphosis understand and few example we could say for this phylum arthropoda that is scorpion cockroach spider and butterfly etc right so hope we have completed this seven phylums so far and we can look into some assignments also so assignment what is deuterostomia what is spongocil mention the uses of nematocyst and what is metagenesis what is bioluminescence mention the functions of flame cells mention the respiratory pigment of annelida what is egg digestion mention the excretory organ of arthropoda so everything is just two mark as well as three mark questions only hope you may have learned this previous portions and please follow this today's portion also we can meet in the next class until then bye thank you